Hey everybody, welcome to Out Loud. It's your girl Claudia Joy, and I'm excited about tonight because I am talking to the stars of two new movies that will inspire and entertain you. My first guest is an actress and a singer from the legendary Winans family. Deborah Joy Winans is here and talking about her experience growing up in a musical dynasty, her career, her Easter special, and her new movie on Lifetime, Color of Love. And later, I'm talking to the cast of the Lifetime biopic, Mahalia. So please, right now, welcome actress. Deborah Joy Winans with the beautiful skin. Hello, Deborah. What's up? What's up? How are you? You look just so just peaceful, ethereal, and just like you know, look, you, can, you realize that you can't handle everything in life and you're not meant to, you just start letting stuff go. Is that yeah. is that what the secret is? Because you're giving me um, just the skin off the shoulder, just your glowy. Are you in love? What's going on? Are you happy? You look extremely happy. I'm very happy. I am very very happy. I just celebrated eight years with my husband. Eight years, um, wow! And you know, being able to do what I love and be supported by the man that I love, with my my brothers and my mom and my dad, like life is life is good. Now, eight years. Okay. So a lot of folks that are married, they're not in love. Right. So that's why I even had to ask, like they, 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 they go through like highs and lows. Can you give the listeners, the viewers, our, our audience right now, what's a tip to keep that in love feeling going? Because I hear it, it, it comes and goes, you know, you need a basis of a friendship. And that is what we can always go back to. Like he is literally my best friend. We were best friends before we even started dating. And so I think that foundation of a true friendship is something that has kept us, but it's also work. You can't just give up when you don't get your way. You have to learn to compromise. It's not just about you. If it was, then you wouldn't have tied yourself to someone else. It is about the two of you and how you guys can make things work. So eight years, I've never made it past four. So is the seven year itch thing, is that a thing where you like look at them, you're like, I'm kind of tired of you. Is that a thing? You know, I I have not (laughs) felt that yet. I honestly, I did not dream of how in love I could be with my husband the way that I am today. I thought I loved him the most when we got married. Mm -hmm. And the way I love that man now, it's it's indescribable. Well, I'm telling you- And he better not go nowhere either. (laughs) You you can just tell when someone's just in a good, happy place. Like before you even mentioned or talked about it, like you just, like I said, I'm like, what's going on? The glowy, the just, you're just radiating. You really are. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I receive it. Okay, good. So what what y'all do for uh, Easter? What are the whinings? How do y'all celebrate the holiday as a family? Girl, it's it's too many of us to always (laughs) Is too many. So what we've tried to do is every other Thanksgiving, get together, have a family reunion. We'll go to Destin, Florida, and we'll rent like three different houses because it's a lot of us. And um, and we'll just spend the week together, Saturday to Saturday, and we will cook together. We will laugh together. This last Thanksgiving, we started singing together. That was the first time we had ever done that at a family reunion. People think we just sit around and sing, and that was never the case. Um, we sang in church, but we didn't just get together at the at different homes and sing. We just didn't do that. But we started doing it last Thanksgiving, and um, it was it's it's just lovely. It's fun. It's rambunctious. It's loud. It's crazy, and it's a bunch of singing, and it's a bunch of cooking, and it's a bunch of eating. That sounds like fun. Like oh, I, want I want in. <laughs> oh God, it is so much fun, and I'm a family girl. I always have been, so I treasure getting together with my grandma, my aunts, my uncles, my brothers, my cousins. It's it's a lot of fun. Speaking of fun, you recently co-hosted the Easter special, Our Own Easter, with your uncle, B.B. Winans, and your aunt, Cece Winans. Uh, she performed, which is amazing. What did you enjoy most about working with them and, and being a part of this special? Oh, my gosh. I never in a million years did I think I'd be able to share the stage with my uncle in that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, That was amazing to me. I was so honored uh, to be asked. It was such a privilege. And then I got to sing a song with him, a song that he and Cece, you know, became who they were off of. 
that was a monumental moment for me. And then it was just fun. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a family girl. So when I got the call to do that, I was like, heck yeah, are you kidding? Right. And we had a blast. We had so much fun and we shot during COVID. And so everybody was extremely careful, always had a mask when we weren't working. Um, but we, you know, you don't need much when you're with the people you love. Mm -hmm. And we didn't need a lot. And we had a really, really good time. And I think it showed. Absolutely. Now you mentioned a little bit in your first big role, you played your aunt Cece in the Lifetime movie, Whitney. So what was that experience like for you? And, and, and did you get a chance to know Houston, Whitney Houston? Did you get a chance? And I absolutely met Whitney. I was around Whitney quite a bit growing up and, um, and then a little bit in my later years. And mm -hmm. uh, she was lovely. Just lovely. What was she like in real? Like, you know, we hear different fun. things. She was fun. That woman mm -hmm. liked to have fun and she was kind and she made jokes. It was just a really good time whenever she was around. Um, and so being able to portray my aunt in that film was, was a very nice moment. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I called her to kind of get a little bit of insider information on her and Whitney's relationship, just mm -hmm. to sort of add that layered effect of, of this character in the film. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was really, really great. Um, I think the biggest challenge for me when playing Cece was when I had to do the musical portion, which was born for this, the B.B. Winans story. And of course, you can't tell his story without Cece. And the pressure I felt trying to sound like her and be like her. Oh my God, Claudia, I almost took myself out. I was going to ask, like, it's one thing to play someone that's not around or you don't know, but to play someone that's not only family is with us and could give you critique. Girl. That's got to be I can like, oh my God, I, they can totally cuss me out there. I'm like, it. <laughs> <laughs> so? it was insane. And I remember I got to a point where we were in rehearsals and um, we were going to do a workshop and I just felt like, and it was all in my head. That's what you start to realize. All mm -hmm. this stuff is in your head because at no point did anybody tell me that I wasn't doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, if people come, they're going to see my last name. They're going to know I'm related. They're going to expect me to sound just like her. And there's a reason why there's only one CC and oh my God, I'm going to fail. And I remember calling her and I said, I just can't sound like you. And this is so hard. And she said, you're not supposed to sound like me. She said, Joy, be you. She said, we already look alike. We already have very similar tones because it's in our DNA. Now mm -hmm. be you. Do what you do and let that come to life. And there was such a release when she said that. I can't be her, so why am I gonna keep trying? I have to figure out who I am in this role. I already have the essence of her. I already look like her. And even during rehearsals, Uncle Bibi would just laugh sometimes and say, girl, you have no idea how much you act like Cece. Really? And so it was already in me mm -hmm. and I was tripping off for no reason. Um, so that was just, you know, you learn how to let go. You learn how to move on and, and do your best. You always just do your best. That sounds like a good life lesson, not only for that role, but just in general, you know, doing your letting go and, and doing your best because it's a lot of times the drama is in our heads, right? It, like she's not even the one tripping you were. We create so mm -hmm. much in our heads and mm -hmm. it's really silly because at the end of the day, you can only control so much. So why do you allow yourself to have all of this anxiety over things you can't control? It's going to be what it's going to be. That's life. We're going to be faced with choices daily. That is life. It's going to be hard. It's going to be easy. It's going to be great. It's going to be rough. But that's what life is. So don't get stuck on the things that you can't change. It's got to let it go. It's like, all right, well, God, I, I hope you worked that out because I can't do it. <laughs> hey, well, hey, that's a word right there, what you just said. That's real talk. So I want to get into uh, one of your other roles. Uh, you joined the uh, own series, Greenleaf, which amazing series. Everyone loves it in a provocative role as a Christian woman whose husband was attracted to men. I wanted to know, what'd you think about your character before you signed on to play her and interesting, juicy role? Well, you know, I didn't know everything about her when I first signed on. Um, mm -hmm. All I knew was Oprah had seen me in the workshop that I did for my uncle's musical. 
And then she called and uh, said that she thought I'd be great for this role, but unfortunately nobody knew who I was. And I was like, well, they wouldn't. I haven't really done anything yet. She's like, that's okay. They'll see what I see when it's time for you to audition. So I audition off of just, I, I, I don't even have the first script of the first episode. I just have just a blip of what charity is. Oh, okay. And so I auditioned with that. I got the role and then everything started rolling out. And I was like, <laughs> okay so you're like finding out just a little bit shortly before we are yeah absolutely but wow. I you know what I loved about charity and what I loved ultimately about Greenleaf is that it started conversations it started um it opened the door for people to feel how they felt for people to feel seen for people to feel validated and really it just opened the door for more love. And I think that's what charity was missing. Charity felt invisible. Charity felt hurt. Charity went through a lot of traumatic experiences. You know, at the height of her pregnancy with twins, her husband tells her that he likes men. And so what do you do with that? She ends up losing a baby and then she has a baby and then they get a divorce. And that was ultimately her best friend. And now he's gone. And, and then you still try to keep going and soldier on because that's what you're taught in church. You just keep going, you keep moving. No, you got to take time. Mm -hmm. You got to take time to grieve. You got to take time to deal with the trauma that is happening in your life so that you can heal. You cannot just go around it. It's still going to be there. So you got to get through it. And ultimately, I think we saw a young woman that went through a lot and she came out on the other side and she really went through it. She took the bad falls. She made the mistakes, but she got back up. She was a fighter. And I think at the end, you saw a woman walking in all of her truth and her power and her black girl magic and not taking anything from anybody. And I love that arc. Do, do you think your show uh, Greenleaf changed the way black Southern Christians are, are portrayed on screen? Absolutely. I think that we, you know, of course we had a lot of drama, but I think that we allowed people to see a full family, a beautiful family, um, a family of all shapes and sizes and color, a family that deals with real things that happen in real life, uh, mm -hmm. things that people watching can really truly relate to. And, um, and then you see them in all of their flaws still understanding that they do love God and that that is their foundation. And no matter the mistakes that they make, they always go back to that foundation. They always go back to that prayer. They always go back to, okay, God, I've messed up, but what can I do now? What would you have me do now? And I think that's a beautiful depiction of a true Christian family because we're flawed. Stop acting like you ain't. Thank You're you. Human. Amen. Okay. So you are flawed and that's okay. And the sooner people accept that, that we're not expected to be perfect, the, the better it can be for all of us. Speaking of perfect, I mean, this woman to me can do really no wrong. Miss Oprah Winfrey, what was it like? We have like a quick minute before we go. What's it like working for Oprah and with Oprah? And is it intimidating? But you said she called him. She's like, you got, you going to. I no, her. it wasn't intimidating at all. She's amazing. She's absolutely everything that you think she is. She's so fun. She's endearing. She's loving. She's huggable. And she, and she gives you jewels and gems throughout the day. If you just listen, mm -hmm. she always said, you know, love's in the details. I was like, well, you watch everything. She said, I watch everything. And yes, I get tired. And yes, a lot is going on, but love is in the details. And when I love something, I make sure I watch everything and make sure I have a close eye. I was like, oh, okay, wow. You just learned so much from her. She's amazing. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. So we're going to take a quick break. But when we return, Deborah Joy Winans is talking about her heartwarming new movie on Lifetime and so much more. Stick around. We'll be back with more Out Loud on Fox Soul when we return. Back with Out Loud. Now, if you want to see more Fox Soul content, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell to get all the best updates on new videos and live shows. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and tell us how you really feel in those comments. I'm talking to the beautiful and talented Deborah Joy Winans about her new Lifetime movie, Color of Love. So let's get into that now. Last year, well, we're going to get into that in a second, but last year, you and your husband, Terrence, were featured on the docuseries, Black Love. Now, were you nervous? I know people get nervous sometimes about sharing 
their personal life on television. Were you nervous about that or, or no? Absolutely. I, you know, I'm not one to really show all of my inner life, my inner circle. I just, I, as an actor, I feel like the less you know, the more you can truly see me in all these different roles that I'd like to play. Um, but when they asked us, Cody and Tommy, my husband to me is just, he's so brilliant and he has so many gems to offer. And so I was like, if we do this, it's going to be you talking the most because I enjoy hearing you talk. And I think that you have a lot of wisdom that you can share with other people. So I was nervous, but I, I ended up thinking that it was for the best. And I hope so. I think it helped people. You totally light up every time you talk about him. <laughs> He's, I just, I really like him. I can tell, I really like, you're like, the, like, like you literally, I'm watching you just light up at the mention of him. He's my dude. He's, you know, he's everything. He is, he is, a, and he allows me to be me. And he, he embraced my flaws before I did. And mm. he showed me how incredible that I could be with them. And so um, that's to me, outside of giving my life to the Lord, this is the next unconditional love feeling that I've ever had. And he's, uh, he's the best. We have a YouTube comment from Nessa. She says they are a beautiful couple. Now, can we expect, oh, could it be something that could possibly be in the works? So, a full Joy and Terrence reality show in the future one day? Would you share this love and show us the way, Queen Mother? Show us the way. Look, I do not claim to have all the answers. You just got to go through life day by day. I mean, could it be in the works? Perhaps. Um, but, you know, he's an attorney and he's working really hard. We both work really hard. And I think the next thing that we'd like to do is try to expand our family. I think that's, oh. the, that's the goal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, okay. I, I, I really want to be nosy and ask more because like the glow is like giving me, okay, but I'm going to say I'm going to mind my business right now. I'm going to mind my, <laughs> I get in trouble with this. So funny. <laughs> I'm going to just mind my business right now and not get in trouble, but Okay. <laughs> I do. I do. We, we want to, we really want to, I think that's going to be our next step to try to, to try to get some little people up in here. So we'll see. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm claiming it. Tonight's the night. Yeah. Tonight's the night. <laughs> well, it can't be tonight because he's not in Canada. <laughs> oh yeah. You get in trouble if it happens tonight. Okay. Yeah, we don't no. not, we're going to unclaim that then. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into your new film, Color of Color of Love. What was it like to work on the TV One movie, Don't Waste Your Pretty, with my girl, Carrie Hilson? How was that oh experience? Oh, my gosh. Okay, first of all, I love her. She's she awesome. is absolutely the best. Um, I did not go there expecting to meet forever friends. You know, mm -hmm. we were at the height of the pandemic. I was pretty nervous. Uh, but the production company really made us feel safe with all of the testing that we did. And then the very first day, I was just like, oh, oh, you're a real one. I love her. Uh, she is funny as all get out. And um, just the sweetest, just the sweetest, sweetest person that you mm -hmm. could meet. Um, and so I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun kind of pulling her out of her shell on, on set. That was a lot of fun. We found out we love the same kind of drinks. Oh, which um, drink is that? Which drink is that? Oh, it's What's gotta be a Hendrix based drink. Okay. Hendrix based. You know, Hendrix mm -hmm. is fantastic. We do love the gin. Um, <laughs> and so we just, we had a really, really good time. I thought the story was really great. I thought being able to see these beautiful black women in, uh, in, in their pain, being vulnerable, but also in their strength and just taking the lead and doing what they have to do, I thought was fantastic. Well, I am so glad to hear that. I think she's a really a great girl. And I, I, I love that you have the same uh, uh, impression of her as I do. I think she's awesome. I really do. Now, you have a new movie called Color of Love airing on Lifetime this Easter Sunday. And we have a clip. Let's take a look. Okay. Opt us. If that works for you. And for you, too. We're good with it, Mom. Are you sure, baby? I mean, it kind of works out perfectly. We're the same ages and 
it's a no-brainer. I love that, that the, the, the subject matter. So this film is based on a true story. So what can you tell us about this film? Um, it's based on a true story about this woman uh, who is a widow uh, and she's got two kids. And when she became widowed, she, you know, the dream that her and her husband had was to have more than two kids. And so she thought a way to sort of fulfill that dream was to become a foster mom and just be a safe place for kids to come until they get, you know, complete or, uh, or a, um, a home that will take them in forever. And um, so she was just a temporary place. And these two kids have made such an impression on her. They end up coming to her house three different times. So number one, that was just a huge red flag because mm -hmm. you shouldn't come to temporary housing three times. What's happening? Where are you being placed? And why is it not working out? Uh, the foster care system is really a mess. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned that huh, it is very hard for young black boys to be fostered. Um, the statistics, statistics of them getting out are very low. And when they do age out, uh, they end up on the streets or in jail or dead. And that's a problem. That is a problem. And the fact that we haven't really, really gotten into the depths of this problem is horrifying to me because there are kids falling through the cracks every day. And so this woman decides that she, you know, these kids fit in her home. They love her children. They love being there. She wants to adopt them. But because, you know, it seems it's interesting, you know, white people can adopt black kids and there's no question. But when a black woman wants to adopt these two white kids, she's not fit. Well, I, I wanted to ask you, we, we really see movies where a black family even helps young white people, not, not, not even talking about adoption, but even helps, mm -hmm. right? So why is this such an important message? Because it's rare. We don't see it. It's very rare. But I think that's the problem in the world today, Claudia, is that love has become rare. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't make any sense. And if we could just get to the basics, which is love, then we could move forward in so many different ways. This film is important because it's not about the color of anybody's skin. It's about these kids. And if you actually put these kids first, because they haven't had a decent home, they're not fed properly, they're abused, they're not cared for, but you make the color of my skin more important than them getting what they need. That's backwards. The system is backwards because it lacks love. Love is so rare these days. And I, I hope that this film allows people to really feel love and, and see that love wins regardless. Don't stop your pursuit of love because, you know, your, your boyfriend may think that it's, you know, a lose-lose battle. Your mother may not be on your side. The system is certainly not on your side. And that's what I loved about this woman. The closest people to her were not on her side, yet she continued because she had the love. And the love will always win. It will well, win. In, this, in this next clip, Monica decides to start the adoption process. Let's take a look at this. Do the kids, all of them. And we decided to start the process to formally adopt them. What do we have to do? I don't even know how much this is gonna cost, Stephanie. I just, I know this is what has to happen. Wow. No. Um, but what, what can audiences of all races walk away with after watching this film? You know, to step outside of their own situation and be the love that someone may need that day. It's, you know, we're all going through things. Some may be harder, some may not be harder, but you can always be a part of the solution and not the problem. Um, be a part of the solution. Find a way to show somebody some love. I'm glad y'all made this film. It is extremely frustrating to hear that there's so many obstacles put in place for, for, for black folks to adopt children, especially if they're not black, uh, white child. Like it's like almost why and the, they're questioning the motive and what is this about? 
when you see all kinds of rich white women or not even rich white women go over to Africa, whatever country they want to go to, pick a baby like it's a purse mm-hmm. and, and, and and not be questioned. It's like, oh, look at the good Samaritan. This is yeah. white, this white savior. I think yeah. kind of that's, that's what it is. It's that white savior yeah. thing. It's like, no, 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 no. We can do this, but we're doing it's- it for the right reason. I mean, especially looking at history. I mean, they had all of our, our our ancestors raising their babies and even breastfeeding their babies, but now we're not good enough to adopt their their the children. That's a whole nother conversation. It's amazing, it's amazing. So, um, I just want to thank you for for being here and bringing your positivity, your happiness. I want to thank your husband, for <laughs> that smile on your face and keeping this glow coming. And we're gonna claim these babies coming into your yes. into, into your yes. life. And, yes, uh, we are. We're going to claim that. Girl, I always love talking to you. So thank you for having me.